Matthew, the fifth chapter, we're looking at the sixth beatitude. It's, it's, it's a one-liner with a whole lot of meat in it. Uh, if you got to say amen. amen. If you don't say, hold on. That's all right. Matthew, the fifth chapter, breaking in at the eighth verse. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it simply says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. In the few minutes that I have your attention, I want to preach from a subject, kingdom hearts. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. This sermon takes place on a mountain somewhere in Galilee where Jesus sits down to have a personal discourse with his disciples. We see the other Beatitudes as they are called. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are they that mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. In our verse, verse 8, blessed are the pure in heart. One thing that we see about the Beatitudes is that it is more descriptive than it is prescriptive. Prescription is something you should do. But to describe is to describe what is. It's not so much what Christians should do, but more importantly, who are you? What you do with God is way more important than what you do for God. Why? Because... When you have a relationship with God, the four pours out of that. Yeah. But some people try to go the other way around and do things for God, but don't have a relationship. Y'all finish it for me. He says here, uh, this is a very descriptive passage that calls for some strong examination of self. Blessed are the pure, that's a descriptive, pure in heart, for they shall see God. This, this, this is important because the kingdom of Jesus Christ is a kingdom of the heart. It's a real kingdom with a real king, but the life of the kingdom is principally a spiritual life, meaning that Christianity is more of a matter of the heart than it is a matter of a building. It's a matter of a heart more than it is your, your little Christian quote that you posted on social media. And I'm glad you posted them. Keep posting them. I, I love your godly tattoos and the scriptures you got on your body. Amen. Thank God for your godly tees. Keep wearing them. But I want you to understand, keep singing, keep teaching, keep preaching. But who reigns in your heart is what matters most. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What you do matters. With your heart matters to God. That's why in Revelation, uh, the second chapter, he had to tell the church of Ephesus, I, I, I know y'all stood strong for, against indoctrination. I, I, I know y'all labored in the ministry, but I have, I have someone against you. I, I, I've got an issue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he said, you left your first love. Return, return. That's grace, verse 5. Return back to the former things. Remember what we had when you first gave your heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any, anything called a kingdom is a place where a king has dominion. His kingdom is not a church building. His kingdom is believers who have accepted him as Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. For the eyes of the Lord, 2 Chronicles 16 and 9 says, The eyes of the Lord, I'm reading from the NLT, search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Now, this is a topical message, so if I 
run past a scripture and you want me to repeat it again, just say, hey, pastor, what was that? That's just how I roll. I'm good. I'm still going to flow in the spirit. I'm going to get you your scripture, 2 Chronicles 16 and 9. He is looking for people whose hearts are committed to him. Huh? You, you have to ask yourself, what is, the, what is the condition of your heart this morning? I, I, I very humbly said that this, should be an, this could be very well an extension of the Lead Well Conference. Because in order to lead whatever you lead, you got to have the right heart. Yeah, I have a, I have a, a, eight, a nine-year-old. She just turned nine uh, on August 9th. My second oldest daughter, uh, we, her name is Kayla. We affectionately call her Love Bug because ain't nobody going to love her you more than Kayla in our family. And uh, Kayla, she's no angel. That's my daughter. She ain't no angel. <laughs> but in the heart of hearts, she's pure. When it comes to her understanding of God, I'll give you a few examples. <laughs> uh, she came to me and said, Dad, uh, and, and, and I'm not saying this because, you know, this is a controversy in social media now, but this really what happened. She said, Dad, this church song is called Church Girls? I said, yes, yes, baby. She said, hmm. Doesn't sound like church. <laughs> I said, no, because a church girl shouldn't drop it like a thotty, so. <laughs> and that's what these Christian artists don't know what they do. I mean, not, I mean, not Christian artists, but that's what these secular artists don't realize they're doing. When they take church stuff and tie it to their secular stuff, they confuse our babies. And, 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 and it's because their heart is pure. Now, some of y'all heard church girl and was like, ah. <laughs> I ain't judging, I'm just saying some of y'all, some of y'all, I ain't gonna point no elbows. We, we were, we were, that, that thing troubled her spirit. Uh, we were at a church service at a, uh, uh, earlier this month and uh, she came, she's spazzing out, daddy, daddy, I'm like, what, Kayla, calm down, daddy, whew, daddy, what? That boy cussed. And we are at church. <laughs> and I said, oh. <laughs> She said, you gonna talk to his parents? I said, no. <laughs> I got four kids. <laughs> I gotta make sure my kids ain't cussing, okay? <laughs> I don't have the bandwidth for another cusser. <laughs> Come on, somebody. And she was, she was befuddled. You're not going to say nothing? Her heart was so pure. She's like, that, this is wrong. But my heart is not pure as hers. I didn't heard folks cussing church a <laughs> whole bunch of times. In church, on church, at church, before church, after church. But her pure heart couldn't fathom that we were walking away from this cussing boy without handling the issue. Oh, but isn't that an example of how we should look at sin? If you got the right heart, certain things touch your ears. Mm -mm. <laughs> Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. My first point is that the heart that we possess. We have to deal today, and some of y'all, your hearts are already fluttering. The Holy Spirit's already talking to you. Conviction is already moving. You're like, mm, 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 this about to be deleted, canceled, removed. Okay, Holy Ghost, I hear you. Surrender, submit. Uh, uh, but look at this. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shalt believe in thine heart. Oh, shall believe in thine heart. Yeah, 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 that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the man believeth unto God, and with the mouth confession is made. So, see, when you came to the faith, it wasn't just your mouth. And what happens is that as we walk with God and as we go through life, our hearts become disengaged. Can we be real? There, there's church hurt and things that, 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 that the opposite of a pure heart is a mixed heart. Contaminated. 
We didn't have some situations that have tainted and contaminated our heart. Yeah, some stuff involved people, but some stuff is just us being dirty, filthy, and, un and heathenistic. And huh? Yeah, okay, let's be real. We done got some sins. We done slept around. We done lied. We done did some stuff, looked at things. We shouldn't have looked at, listened to stuff. We shouldn't have looked at. And over time, your heart becomes, as the Bible describes the heart sometimes, hardened yeah. to where it's a heart of stone. Hard for you to hear. That, that's an issue. Why? Because you, you have your physical heart, but you also have your spiritual heart. And your spiritual heart is the center of who you are. It is the core of who you are. It is where you uh, agree with what's right and what's wrong. Yeah. It's where conviction happens. It's where your reverence lies for God. It's where decisions are made. It's where, mo where morality is decided in your heart. See, heart also is synonymous with thinking in the Bible. So sometimes when it says heart, it really means mind. Right. Y'all still with me? Uh, but, 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 but the problem is, if your heart, your spiritual heart, is the core of who you are, if the heart is contaminated, everything else is contaminated. <laughs> See, see that, that, that's why sometimes when spouses are in a funky mood and they come home to people that ain't did nothing to them, it's because their heart is contaminated. And, they're con and whatever's connected to their lives, that, oh, y'all ain't talking to me. Uh, but if the heart is holy, holiness, we, 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 we've got to deal with the heart that we possess today. It is the culmination of the decisions we've made. It's a culmination not only of just bad decisions, but even good decisions. And I know some of us has been delivered for some crazy stuff, but do you know what I want to point out real quick? There's some slight compromise that crept into our hearts. Oh, boy. It's, it's, the, it's the permissive stuff that you can do but can get in the way of the will of God. C come on, come on. You, you watching another show on Netflix, ain't prayed. Okay, somebody real over here. Somebody is real over here. Your, your thighs are numb because you've been on the toilet looking at Instagram. I'm real. You got the whole seat print just... Had it on your thigh. Because you done been on Instagram, and, hey, and you know it's bad when it says you are up to date. You done looked at everything. <laughs> but you too busy to spend time with God. You can get, uh, this for me, you can get up at, at 5 a.m. and go to the gym, but you can't get up and pray. Oh, that's, it's, it's, it, that, that's, that's what I have to deal with because I ain't, I ain't out here. I ain't going to kill nobody unless you touch my babies. I ain't going to kill nobody. Pray for me because I don't know what I do. Um, I, I, I ain't out here doing a crazy, but it's, it's the stuff that I'm allowed to do, but I probably shouldn't be doing because... And so we deal with the heart that we possess, but then there's the heart that God desires. There's the heart that God desires. He desires our king who reigns in our hearts. He desires that we have pure hearts. The 24th number of Psalms, the third and the fourth verse reads, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in this holy place? Huh? He that hath clean hands. Anybody here else hear Travis Green when I'm reading that? Okay, I don't know if any other music lovers. A, a pure heart who have not lifted up his soul into the vanity nor sworn deceitfully. Mmm. Uh, 2 Timothy 2.22, flee also youthful lust, but follow after righteousness, faith, charity, and peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. The heart that God desires is a heart that is unmixed. Now, I have, to, I have to clarify this. A pure heart is the description, but it's not absolute. Meaning nobody has a heart that doesn't have contamination. Nobody. Nobody. I don't care how saved you are, how long you've been saved, bishop, archbishop, prophetess, uh, missionary, evangelist, leader, singwriter, songer for Jesus. You got something in you. Yeah. 
you got something in you that shouldn't be in there. Because you wrapped in this thing called flesh. And the only way we're going to not have nothing in this is when we get our glorified bodies in a prepared place. Come on, somebody. Uh, but, but, here, but here, he wants us to have a pure heart. Why? Because, amen, young, amen. Come on. I know that's right, baby. She said, yes, pure heart. See the baby, she don't know, she prays and don't even know it. Because with a pure heart, when God gives you a command, it's easier to submit. Pure heart says, yes, Lord. Mixed heart says, why? No, mm-mm. With who? Who gonna be there? And they gonna be in this ministry? Ah, no, 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 we gotta talk. See, we gotta talk because last time we tried to have a meeting, she had an attitude. I don't know about this. Mixed heart, there's preferences and itineraries that you want. You want things a certain way. Pure heart says, Lord, let your will be done. That's, that's the blessing of a pure heart because the will of God is unhindered and it manifests itself in outward behavior. Pure heart is not hidden. You, you know right now, as I'm preaching, some folks in your life that got a, they, 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 they decent. They got a pure heart. They don't play about righteousness, holiness, and standards when they come to God. You may not find many, but just, and if you can't find one, let's um, get you in a life group. <laughs> you hanging out with the wrong. <laughs> Your people are like, gang, gang, what's up? Boy, what I do? What? Yes, sir, you always about to go down, son. Okay. <laughs> see, see Pastor Webb after church. We'll get you to the right gang. Oh. <laughs> Our, our king, our king over these kingdom hearts desire that we be as pure as much as possible. What am I saying? At least deal with the obvious stuff you don't even have to pray about that you know is wrong. At least, even if you struggle with it, at least there be a struggle. You know, it's bad when it just ain't a struggle. And you just, woo <laughs> No, no conviction. You just living life. <laughs> hey, <laughs> bro, you know we ain't about to do that. <laughs> Don't you serve on the deacon board? Like, <laughs> you, you just okay. You just gonna post that? Okay, okay. Uh, there, there's, there's the heart. That we possess, there's the heart that God desires. And the heart that God desires comes with a blessing. It says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Mm, that, that's important. Because if you can see God, it can change your perspective and your attitude on life. It, 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 can, it, can, it can cause you to calm down. Now, now, of course, we're not saying see God in his essence because we won't see that until we are with him in glory. But I'm saying God is too big just to confine him to heaven. I, I remember my father-in-law told me, you can see God in everything. He said, you see that plaque over there? I remember we was in Florida and I, we was, he said, you see that plaque over there? He said, you see the one at the top? I said, yeah. He said, it's only one, that's Christ. All the, other, all the other plaques is followers. We just got to follow. I said, hey, man, Bishop, all right. <laughs> you saw that on that dusty plaque. Hey, man, all right. <laughs> there, there, there's some people that look at these current events that are going on, COVID, monkeypox, the pandemic, and violence. And there is no God. But a pure heart? <laughs> said, my God is still in control. <laughs> Pure, pure heart says, the word has already prophesied this. Y'all don't notice this? Pure, pure heart says, this is, this, this is what's supposed to happen. What y'all worried about? <laughs> don't y'all read this book? Don't y'all know at the end we win? Anybody see God? I see God. I see him. I see him. I, I know what the government is doing, but I still see God. I, I see his omniscience. I see his will. Some people look at this scripture, ah, this is the white man's religion. 
King James got them people together to put it by. This ain't from God. Okay. But when I look at the Bible, it gives me life. Yeah. See God. Especially when you're going through an adversity. Come on. When you're going through a trial. Come on, so I, I could tell y'all some stuff. Because y'all know coming to new community with spiritual warfare, you know you can't do nothing for the kingdom. Yeah. Ah, without some type of opposition. And that's, that's why when you're in the thick of it, you can't let the adversity get in your heart. Yes. You in it, but don't let it get in you. <laughs> Hear me when I say yeah. I know what it looked like. I know what I feel. <laughs> but yet will I trust him, though, though many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver us. Ah, anybody going through something, they can still see God. I see him. It don't feel good, but I see him. I don't like what I see, but I see him. I don't agree with everything, but I see him. And one thing you know, I'm going to keep doing, I'm going to trust him. See? When you, when you got a mixed heart, you won't trust. You say, if God don't do this, then he ain't God. I see him. I see him. Help me, Holy Ghost. I see him in my son's sickle cell diagnosis. I see what he's doing. You want to give my baby a testimony? Okay, God. You, you want to use my baby to advertise your power. Okay, God. Not my will. Your will be done. Hey. It hurt. It hurt to see him get his blood transfusion. He only a year old. It hurt to see him break him. But God, not my will. I trust him. I trust him. Even with my baby, I trust him. He's able. Oh, I'm believing that one day they're going to say he cured. Remember what I love about my little boy? He got sickle cell, but it ain't got him. Man, he run around my house, he tear up everything. We forget he got something. We struggle giving him medicine because we forgot he run around so good. That's why you gotta, you gotta have a pure heart. It ain't easy, but you got to hold back. Proverbs 4.23 says, keep that heart with all diligence, yes, yes. for out of it flows the issues of life. You got to protect your heart. Yes. Even when you upset with God, yes. you got to protect your heart that it don't go too far. Because yeah. I done seen some brothers go too far. Yeah. They're not in the church no more. Yeah. Yeah. More importantly, God is not on the throne of their hearts. See, that's what you call, y'all sit down, y'all making me nervous. <laughs> hey. Hey, Mario, I ain't had nothing else important to say. I was done. That was it. I ain't got no more. And if you ask me, that's the blessing. That's the blessing of being pure in heart, seeing God in a way that doesn't steal your joy while you're in it. That's what money can't give you. Just because you have a bed don't mean you're going to have sleep. 
<laughs> Listen, the older I get, the more I appreciate what money can't give me. I need money, though. I do. But there are some things money has a cutoff. You, you need Yahweh. You need Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Tiskanu. Jehovah Shalom. El Shaddai. Elohim. Yeah. I'm almost done. I got eight minutes. I ain't trying to lose my job on the first day. Y'all know me, I'll be over here snotting and crying on the floor. <laughs> there's, there's the, <laughs> I'm at home. There's the heart that we possess. There's the heart that God desires, the blessings of a pure heart. And my admonishment, my challenge, challenge to you this morning would be to fight to have the heart of a true disciple. Yeah. God will give you a new heart, but you have to maintain it. When you got saved, and you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. He gave you a new nature by the filling of the Holy Spirit that gave you a new heart. And I'm saying a new spiritual one, whereby you would love things you didn't love before like righteousness and holiness, like, like prayer and praise, like worship, like the word, like unlovable people. <laughs> they was like, ah, nah, nah. Now, where did you go to get saved? I didn't get that one in my package. Was that a new community or was that St. John? Where was she? God, God, God will give you a new heart, but you have to maintain it. And we saw that in Proverbs 4.23, keep thy heart with all diligence. But James 4 and 8 says, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. When I looked at I never looked at it like this before in comparison with the, this scripture, Matthew 5 and 8, but when you look at it, double-minded is a mixed heart. Exactly what it is. You, you trying to be loyal to yourself and loyal to God. Oh, you're going to be walking backwards. Uh, it says we, we, some of us today, have to get our hearts out of the way. Some of us today have to decide to renounce the things in our hearts that rebuttal the things of God in our hearts on the inside, amen? That's my challenge to you this morning. You know, there was a king in the Bible who had a mixed decision. He decided to sleep with a woman that wasn't his. I don't know if you ever heard of him before. Yeah, yeah. He, she had to be fine too, like fine, like my, fine like you. Like you. Uh, fine, she, she fine. And she mine, that's the difference between our situation. Huh? Blessed. Oh. <laughs> amen, amen. Uh, the Lord blessed me indeed. Uh, 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 he sought his woman, and in order to cover up his sin, he had her husband killed in the, in the heat of battle and thought he got away with it. And this prophet came and said, hey, bro, you, you wrong. You dirty. Your heart dirty, and, it, and he, he realized it was about him. And da David wrote something that we can take home. He said in Psalm 51, verse 10, created me. Created me. Uh, created me. Uh, and renew a right spirit in me. Meaning God. <laughs> There's something in me that I can't do myself. But if I go to the maker that created me, He can go in and wash out the impurities. I dare somebody to give him your dirty heart this morning. It says in the word, thou broken and contrite, thou will not. Your dirtiness 
Hold on. I ain't even say this to the morning service. Your dirtiness don't disqualify you. That's a shout right there. Yeah. You can come dirty and contaminated, mixed and polluted, stinky and smelly. And he'll say, son, daughter. <laughs> Some of y'all, life ain't hard. Your heart just in the way. The enemy ain't attacking you. Your heart is in the way. Somebody put their hand over their heart. And declare over yourself. Say, I will have a kingdom heart. One more time. I will have a kingdom heart. One more time. I shall have a kingdom, a kingdom. Heart. heart. Come on, give God some praise in here. Hey, glory. Yes, God. Glory to God.